Welcome to Podcasting Power Hour with your host, Jeff Townsend, a.k.a. The Indie Podcast Father. I'm your co-host, Greg, from Indie Drop-In Network. Podcasting Power Hour is recorded live every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitter Spaces. Every week, an experienced panel of podcasters and other experts will tackle your podcasting questions. We will, of course, put links to all of our guests and any relevant information in the show notes. All right, let's get this party started. Your favorite music, Greg. Yeah, I was just humming it and you turned it off. You're doing great, though. I'm sure you were just humming right along. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Hello. It's doing something weird saying I already have two co-hosts. Not sure why, but that's fine. I don't have to be a co-host. I think, I think it's because you invited me twice. That's somehow, not good. I thought. I'm not hearing anyone. You don't hear us? You might have to leave. Dave Jackson. Leave and come back. That is so weird. You know, that is weird. Yeah, he might have to leave and come back. That's what I had to do when I could only hear him, which was weird. <laughs> Maybe boot him and have him come back. I don't think he can hear you saying that he needs to leave and come back. If I boot him, he ain't coming back. All right. Some sort of weird Bluetooth issue I can hear now. Okay. I Fuzz hear every word. To... I hear every word you say. Fuzz was trying to get me to boot you. Give it just a minute here. Hi, right, how's it going? Uh, North east cold case unsolved it's actually going pretty decent i had a question for you guys um I, how familiar are you guys with iheart radio hey they're number one in podcasting okay well <laughs> they're actually i've got i live in a, a really small town in connecticut and the um, manager like one of the head managers is trying to recruit me because she's i mean my podcast i've been working on it for two years i've got a i've got a phone that i haven't even Dropped, I haven't even dropped the promo yet because Anchor got bought out by Spotify, but iHeart is um, wanting me to exclusively sign with them. I mean, I haven't, like I said, I haven't even, I haven't even yeah. dropped, well, dropped an episode, but they see what I do, though, because I do a lot of missing purpose cases, and I'm in school for criminology, disabled veteran, I help, you know, I do a lot of uh, name and all that other stuff. I help, you know, so I've well, been spread in. As you're, you know, as you're just getting into this, you may not have caught my sarcasm. Uh, iHeart is somewhat famous for making lists that they run where they vote themselves number one. Um, the top person in podcasting, which is a list by iHeart, often is, you know, having the top person be someone from iHeart. Um, I'm not a big fan of going exclusive anywhere. Um, yeah. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, it just... You know, everybody that I know, well, I shouldn't say everybody, many people that I've heard gone exclusive when their contract runs out, they don't stay exclusive. Um, And and iHeart is not a, uh, unless they allow you to syndicate your show everywhere, but if they say, nope, you're only in the iHeart app, um, that would be a problem. But the, the other thing to keep in mind, do you have any kind of following now? Oh my God, I've got, um. 20,000 on Facebook. I've got um, 6,000 on one of my Twitters. On my other Twitter, I've got 10,000. I've got, um, oh my goodness, I've got on uh, Snapchat, I've got 5,000. I've got, got um, yeah, I've got a lot. Of, I mean, I've been doing working on it for two years, but it's been like, you know, I've been busting my because I do a lot of the missing person cases. And a lot, I've been help out with other podcasts too. So they putting my name on stuff. So it's like, I mean, I've got a following, but I'm just, you know, waiting for the time to get the promo out. And I'm, I just got a case where um, I'm actually a, a case that's kind of older that has gotten no attention at all that I've been working on. Working with the family and the it's, it's, it's in North Carolina. It's actually North Carolina. It's not even in the Northeast, but it's so old that nobody's been helping them. And, you know, the person needs to be heard. It's, it's, a, it's a case where the family's yeah. just like, nobody's helping them at all. Are, are they just looking to be your exclusive partner for advertising, or what are they offering? Um, right now, the the way she worded it to me, she's like, well, Anchor, Anchor was bought out by Spotify. So if you don't want to work with Spotify, I'm like, well, why not? Spotify can use your music for free. You know, like, I don't have to worry about music. No, that's not true. And, what? That's not true. 
Um, you, any, any unlicensed music, you need clearance, even on Spotify. And that was only on anything with the word Spotify in it. There's an asterisk. Um, now, I need to get up to speed on what they just did over the weekend with video. But, for instance, when they said you can play music in a podcast, it was one and you had to voice over if i remember no you didn't voice over it it was only available in the app and only there's always an, an asterisk to it so just be you know the, the bottom line for me at least is is be is be everywhere and typically networks don't make small shows big they make big shows bigger so um you know and and ask somebody else who has the same deal what was live life like before iheart and what was life like after they started working with iheart because um you know uh, it's just one of those things where and make sure you own your brand I've, I've heard of other shows that have joined other networks and didn't realize that they signed over the name of their show and they didn't own it anymore so um Gor- the one smart the, uh, yeah the, i i bought out northeast cold case i bought out like um seven different domains i bought it out from like dot org dot com i bought it all out <laughs> And, yeah, but it, if you contract. if you sign a contract with them and it says that oh, no. uh, that you're exclusive to them, then you may not be able to use those after your contract ends. If you uh, you're going to have to really read into that contract to make sure. And I'll tell you that the iHeart the iHearts of the world are uh, are as big as they are for a reason, and that reason is uh, they like to take they like to block things off and and. Uh, uh, make it as difficult as possible for there to be competition with them. And I would also, I would also add. I mean, I heard, you know, I, I I don't I don't know much about your podcast, but it's true crime. I mean, it's about Mr. right. Yeah, yeah. Of the yeah. Left, left I, I, I would case. also add: be very careful about signing with like one exclusive platform. Um, it's the same thing with Anchor, v, uh, aka Spotify. You know, I've seen where I've actually had some clients of ours, you know, be like, yeah, I want to go uh, be on Anchor. And, and I, I steer them away from that kind of thing because they can own your content and they can take you down if they don't like what you're doing. So if, if you're going to uh, choose to sign with something like that, make sure you own your stuff. Because if you if they decide they don't like you and, and, and you don't know that they now own your stuff, they can take you down in a heartbeat. Okay, so... um. Okay, so meaning I own it, so should I get? I'm, I don't know if I should do nonprofit or just get it like just copyright it all. No, just be sure you don't sign your the rights to your own content away over to someone. Yeah, else. There, I okay. I forget the podcast, but it was two girls. They became popular. Basically, got fired from their own show. They restarted like they, season two with like new hosts, and the old hosts are like, um, excuse me, we're over here, and they're like, yeah, you you don't do the show anymore, so. Uh, was that court junkie the ones that were um that were stealing stuff from wiki or something like i don't that? remember i would definitely um they hand you a contract before you sign it i would recommend gordon firemark he's an entertainment lawyer and uh he can look over that and make sure you're not going to get the shaft okay yep agreed yeah that's yeah because it, it made me kind of nervous i'm like i mean because i'm like i'm like why would you want me just i said i haven't even dropped an episode yet and they're like, oh, well, we've gotten good words and done it. And I'm like, well, I th-. and then my husband had said, oh, it's because of all the followers you have. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. All right. Well, well thank you for, for joining. We have, uh, we have yet to even kick off the show. So I think we'll reset the room here real quick and, and then, okay. and then start, start the room. Thanks for coming on. Okay. No problem. All right. Looks like James trying to come up, but he's having issues. Apparently, he might have to leave and come back. I'm not sure. Yeah, because it's not it, I don't see him connecting. I don't know if he had something to comment on that or not. I know he loves uh, Spotify, but I'm not sure how much he loves iHeart. Yeah, James, I don't know. You might have to leave and come back in. I don't know if he's doing something weird or not. But Yeah, everybody's having problems tonight on this okay. awesome well, platform. Well, if James right. has two arms, he probably has two tattoos. I mean, we know one's Spotify. <laughs> the other one's probably iHeart. I'm sure it is. We'll go ahead and get it kicked off here. Podcast and Power Hour. We're going to give a little bit of a recap on the greatest, most life-changing event we hear about every year podcast movement where you moved where you not or was it the same old same old then we're going to dive into the infinite dial review is podcasting dying is it thriving or is it just the same data they keep forgiving us every year we will determine that tonight greg's with us from indie drop-in hall of famer dave jackson mayor fuzz martin and a bunch of michelle jackson refusing to speak acting like her phone is broke and of course james cribland is uh trying to get in here but 
I'll try to get him up here. Oh, how's that, Greg? Is that a good intro? Yeah, I mean, six out of ten. I mean, the fact that it's 13 minutes after, yeah. you had to deduct a couple points, if I'm honest. Well, you know, we, we made an exception for, for somebody. We're nice like that. Okay, so Dave Jackson, podcast movement. Were you moved? Did you come back with some tattoos? Do you know a lot more about podcasting now? How was it? Well, you have to remember, this is there's the two different beasts in my book. There's podcast movement. That's where everybody and their brother goes out to Denver in a couple months. And then there's podcast movement evolutions, which they don't say it. I mean, there are podcasters there, not near the number that are going to go to podcast movement. But that thing sure smells and looks a lot like a B2B conference. Because I know I was at the Libsyn booth and my job was to stay at the booth while the advertised cast people ran off and did meetings and Rob Walsh ran off and did meetings. And every time I turn around, uh, Todd Cochran and Rob Greenlee, everybody's doing meetings, a lot of meetings there. So it seems like because the the art hearts and the the wonderies and the, you know, all the different networks are there. Um, the it begin, Trinitron, Trina something, the big giant advertising, uh, Triton. Uh, had a big giant, you know, almost like, hey, let's build a house in the middle of all the booths. You know, a lot of that stuff going on. Um, so it was, it seemed like a really good conference. A lot of hustle and bustle going on. It was a big, it was Las Vegas. I was having PTSD because it's where the New Media Expo died. Because I walked in, I'm like, I remember this place. I'm like, oh yeah, the New Media Expo. This is the last place it was held at. So that was kind of fun. Um, James did a great report on his uh, podcast report card, especially on uh, if I remember the slides right, while Spotify may have more users, they had three, like it was three plays, I guess, uh, per user, where Apple had like 27 plays per user. So it's it, that was, I found that very interesting. Um, it was AI. You know, I'm, I really am expecting to pick up a box of Frosted Flakes with Tony the Tiger on the front that says, now with AI, uh, because we've got CapTio. <laughs> We've got Cap Show, we've got Swell AI, and I forget the other one began with Pod. You know, that narrows it down. It was like Pod Mia or something like that. And when I talked to the guy, it was basically, you know, Cap Show and Swell AI, only cheaper. Uh, I did feel bad. I can't remember the name of the app, but there was one app that had a booth and it said podcast. It was a podcast listening app, but it said by podcasters for podcasters. And I really wanted to see what the heck that meant. But unfortunately, when you fired up their app, you got the white screen of death and they finally got it to work the the last day of the conference. But I just, I felt so bad. I can't imagine spending thousands of dollars on a booth and then your your product won't work. Well, that's so because that, it was by podcasters. It should have been by developers. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know if James saw anything that, uh, you know, I know he had his, uh, his meetup. I missed that, unfortunately. But uh, James, what did you see? Yeah. Um, uh, firstly, I've just spent the last 10 minutes trying to get this to work on my Android phone and uh, have given up, and I'm using a, uh, a toy phone instead. So uh, apologies for that. Because <laughs> um, it just works, James? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, just works. it just works. Yeah, it just works. Uh, I blame you, Elon Musk, Space Karen. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, it was... It was um, I mean, the 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 venue was uh, wasn't great. It shouldn't have been in Vegas at all. Um, I've got no idea what the podcast movement folk were thinking about when they moved it to Vegas. It's back in LA next year. But I think Dave is absolutely right. It, it is a B two B conference. That's really what it's there for. And I think, is this boys to boys or business to business? What does that mean? <laughs> business to business. Yes, the, the, there are some women who work in podcasting too. You know, so uh, yeah. So I think uh, uh, you know from that from that point of view, there was some there was a lot of business meetings going on, um, and almost the the talks that were going on were kind of incidental to the business meetings that were that were going on. I was having uh, you know an awful lot of chats with people. Um, and, uh, you know, so from that point of view, it was, it was very successful. Um, I, but you know, it's probably not the sort of conference that if you were a podcast host, you would have got an awful lot of value out of, if I can be honest. So I think, uh, you know, it's always going to be one of those weird things for the podcast hosting companies. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, what I got out of it, thank you, Dave, for, um, mentioning the, both the the pod news report card but also that data from podbean that i was uh, showing off i thought that was fascinating seeing that the average request for an episode uh in the us uh from spotify is just 13 so if you're a listener to podcasts 
uh, then you will um, then you will download or play th- uh, three just three different episodes in a typical month. But if you have a look at the same number for Apple, a typical a- uh, listener in Apple Podcasts uh, will uh, play um, around about uh, twenty, I think twenty six podcast episodes um or request 26 podcast episodes so there's a big big difference there and i think what's going to happen is we're going to see a big change to that because spotify's one of spotify's announcements last week was that they are adding something that they called auto podcast playback so when you reach the end of you know joe rogan um then it will play you something else that it thinks you'll like um and that may not be something that you're currently subscribing to um i think that's actually pretty good news for podcasters that can work out how that algorithm works um so i think that that's a you know a pretty good uh, a pretty good uh, thing so lo- lo- looking forward to seeing the effects of that in the next uh, slice of of uh, data but uh, yeah it was a good um you know it it was a good time as good as being in a rather rundown hotel in the north of vegas can be um and uh, looking forward to <laughs> podcast podcast movement proper in denver in colorado in august <laughs> Michelle Jackson, who claims her uh, phone doesn't work, but I'm not believing it, she's being shy. But she said it's probably more affordable. I think she's hitting the hammer on the nail there. She said it felt smaller. The ambies were amazing, but it should stop saying the indies can compete. That's your favorite topic, James. James, what the hell is an indie podcast, man? What the hell don't, is an indie don't podcast? get him started? Do not well, get him started. I can answer that question from the ambies. Now, this is via Gordon Firemark told me this that they had a category for an independent podcaster. And this yeah. meant they, they spent less than $3,000 per episode. Yes. Yes. That was That's an astonishing what, that, thing, wasn't it? I thought <laughs> I mean, that was interesting. I, yeah. That encompasses most of them, I think. That, that, that encompasses pretty well every podcast ever made from the majority of people. Yeah. No, exactly. Um, and um, by the way, uh, uh, my, um, my friend Sam Sethi was sat in the, in the front row of the Ambies. Uh, and uh, he tweeted uh, a photograph just before they were going to start saying, I am sitting in the American Podcast Awards. <laughs> and I thought, and I thought, that's <laughs> absolutely right. That's what they are. Um, every single award was won by somebody from the US, apart from one, which was won by somebody from Canada, who are basically nice Americans anyway. Uh, so from that point of view, that was, uh, that, was, that was interesting, that basically the Podcast Academy, which is supposed to be a global um, you know, a global organization uh, had, um, had, had, were basically saying that uh, there was nothing that was potentially award winning from any other country in the world other than the US, which is um, not the case. So that was a bit, uh, that was a bit sad to end up seeing. So, I mean, I guess to me, like, is there a big benefit from there being two of these things? It's a great question. What do you mean, like a uh, competitor? No, I, I'm just saying two podcast movements. I mean, Oh. I, I, I don't think it's clear enough um, uh, what the difference between evolutions and the standard podcast movement is. Um, but I think if you were to look back at 2019 when they were launching podcast movement evolutions, um, you could very much ar- ar- argue that the main podcast movement was getting too big. Um, it was getting really unwieldy in terms of being able to actually run that thing. And so arguably what they've done is they've split it into a business conference, which is Podcast Movement Evolutions, which should happen every year in L.A. And the main podcast movement, which is much more around creators, which um, goes around the U.S. Um, and I think that is re- that, that, that's relatively clear. Where it gets a little bit more complicated is that obviously they still wanted the, the income from, you know, from Dave's booth and from you know, everybody else's booth. And so therefore, they had to get some creators there, because, you know, booths aren't necessarily going to be earning an awful lot of money from business to business work. So um, I think I think uh, the, the presence of the booths and the business model behind an event like podcast movement evolutions, it basically meant that it wasn't as clear what the um, you know, what the thing was about. Um, but, you know, having said that, um, you know, lots of great, lots of great conversations. One, one person said to me, and I don't know if it was you, Dave, but one person said to me that there were a lot of people that just came for the Ambies and then left as soon as the Ambies had finished, uh, which I thought was an interesting, an interesting thought. So actually it didn't necessarily turn into as large a, um, 
set of people for the main podcast movement um, conference. I think that theatre, Barry Manilow's theatre, seats 1,900 from looking at the Wikipedia entry yesterday. Um, and the theatre was full. Um, I was right at the back, and the theatre was absolutely full. So if there were 1,900 people for the Ambies, there definitely weren't 1,900 people for the actual um, podcast movement. So perhaps there's, there's a learning there. Yeah, on their website, it says Evolutions is our newest event concept and is more focused, is a more focused experience for those in attendance. The content is all about the changing landscape of the podcast industry. Whether you're an industry professional, a full time podcaster, or a hobbyist creator, see, that's where I go, mm, I don't know about that. It's important to know what's happening in the space, but I don't think that accurately describes what I saw. I'm not, yeah, I'm not I would sure. agree. I, I don't think, I don't think hobbyist creator. If you were a hobbyist creator, yeah, sure, there were some there were some things there for you, and there was a beginner's track, which was a bit weird. But I think you know mostly the the focus is very much on the, on the first half of that, on the you know people in the business of podcasting. That's what that event I think is really there for. Um, and so, from the point of view of, I mean, quite a lot of the boo, quite a lot of the booths were, were telling me, and Sharon from Triton, she was basically saying three years ago we would have been getting new business here. This year, what we're doing is we are making our existing relationships better. Um, So we're understanding our existing clients better. We're potentially upselling them. But in terms of new business, you know, that 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 wasn't that wasn't really a thing. And I and I can I can certainly see that. And I think from, you know, from what you you were telling me at the event, uh, Dave, you were probably seeing that too. people coming up to your 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 booth and basically asking you support questions of how to do things and you were there showing some of the exciting new things in Lebsin 5. Yeah, that's I did that probably and spent like 20 minutes with a person, you know, where if it was your typical kind of event, by that time you've got a line of two or three people waiting to to talk to you. So it was a little slower pace, so I was having deeper conversations with less people than the typical kind of event where it's kind of on the surface here's what we do here's a brochure on to the next person kind of thing so yeah um, yeah yeah and the and the other thing uh, the the other thing just to mention is that um spotify were there but they weren't there um they had their own sort of secret area um journalists like me aren't invited which makes me feel super good so thank you spotify um but, but uh you know, so they they were there. Um, no show from anybody from Apple this year, um, which I think is a is a shame. I, I can appreciate that. You know, it's miles away from LA, and it, it's difficult to try and convince people further up the chain, particularly in this economic climate, for you to basically say, "Is it all right if I go to a, a conference in La, in Las Vegas?" Because everybody turns around and says, "Oh yeah, conference, eh?" Um, so I can completely understand that, but it was a shame not to see any of our friends from uh, from uh, Apple there. I noticed that Ariel is also um, is also in the, in the space. Maybe she has a different point of view. I didn't see I didn't see Ariel at all, other than uh, a quick two minute uh, <laughs> two minute chat. So clearly, Ariel was uh, hard at work doing all kinds of things, talking to uh, her clients and everything else. But um, you know, maybe she has a different point of view if she wants to speak, and if she doesn't want to speak, then that's also cool too. I sent her a mic uh, request. Maybe she was hard at work in the casino. You know, you never know. Yeah, maybe she was. Yeah, my my, my days of doing that are long gone, isn't it? It's, it's amazing to find out that in Nevada, people still still uh, smoke. Uh, that, that was a that was a thing. They can they can smoke in the <laughs> casino floor. So as a result, every time you walk through the casino floor, it's just like stinky, stinky, horrible cigarette smoke. No good whatsoever. She can't speak, but she's sending her love. She just DM me. Anyways, well, there you go. Nothing better than some good old secondhand smoking, like back in the day on airplanes, huh? Nevertheless, oh, yeah. uh, so you, you guys, I think Michelle touched up on it when she posted down there below. If you have any questions or statements, of course, you can do that in the lower right hand corner. But the infinite dial data that's always like uh, one of the big things that and I thought it came out typically, you know, it'll, it'll, it's presented there, right? So that's always a very, critical moment so takeaways from it uh just to kick it off i mean it looks like every smartphone everything like that every smart device is up which is not surprising i mean i didn't think so at all i know greg owns every sort of expensive widget there is Uh, true (laughs) i have nothing android 
<laughs> oh, there's the dig. There's the dig. Yeah, yeah. That's why uh, you can hear me. F- funny though, uh, looking at the the automobile players, it was uh, roughly fifty fifty between Apple and and Android and who uses what in their vehicles. But uh, yeah, it was interesting to see that podcasts are up nineteen uh, percent over last year in terms of audio sources listened to in a car. That was uh, my big reason for leaving radio was. Uh, both online audio and podcasts uh, eventually taking over, and I wanted to get ahead of the curve. So glad to see that uh, my feelings were validated 12 years ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, everything's looking up. It's all everything's rose. Let's see. Uh, I like that. Other... I like that Go work ahead. from home stat. I thought that was really interesting. Went from 24 percent in 2021 to 14%, and mm-hmm. I have to think that that helped podcast listening. I agree. Um, it's also, if you look at the monthly podcast listening data, um, kids, I, I like how they have 12 to 34 as an age group. Cause to me, like, uh, I, 12 to, uh, 24 is a too big of a spread, but, um, but, you know, just taking this into account, okay, 12 to 34 uh, 55% of them listen to podcasts, uh, in the 35 to 54 Fifty-one percent listen to podcasts, so it's good to see that the generations coming up behind us uh, are uh, are listening to more and more podcasts, and I think that's that's great, and only means big things for the future. Um, meanwhile, our fifty-five plus uh, brothers and sisters are listening to twenty-one percent. They're listening to podcasts. That's actually the one that's going down. So um, they were they peaked at twenty-six during twenty twenty-one. So. Um, do we have, uh, did anybody post this link in the, the link to the, uh, infinite dial PDF in the, I'll get it up there just in a second. Okay, cool. Uh, so that I don't sound like I'm just spitting stats at you, but, uh, 40, 40% of all people age 12 to 54 have listened to a podcast in the last week, which is awesome. Average podcast listener listens to nine podcasts within the last week. And there's 90 million different listeners each week, which is all awesome stuff. Yeah, there's some there's some really good good numbers in there, and I think um, you know the the numbers in the infinite dial um, historically have just gone up, uh, and they've gone up slowly and surely uh, over the last fifteen uh, years or so. It's actually been running for twenty five years, which is um, quite a thing. But if you have a look at um, you know, so if 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 you have a look at uh, uh, last year, there were some uh, dips, which I think scared the market a little bit uh and in this particular case it's nice t- to see the numbers going back in the right direction um so clearly the the pandemic or the um the end of the pandemic um because of course there's no such thing as covid anymore so the end of the pandemic has uh, clearly fixed um uh you know quite a lot of the um of the growing pains that the industry was uh, seeing so i think from that point of view that's certainly good and i think um you know, there's there's good news coming out of that, and also to be frank, good news coming out of revenue that we're seeing. Uh, the financial results uh, over the last couple of weeks have been quite positive in terms of podcasting, not necessarily so positive in terms of everything else, but quite positive in terms of the the podcast uh, divisions of the businesses who've been uh, giving their financials. So I think you know, all all in all, all all of the figures are pointing in the right direction, which is uh, really good. There, yeah, Jeff just posted the infinite dial uh, link in the what do we call it the billboard is that what it's called oh, that, the, ne- the nest the nest thank you in the nest uh but yeah i i agree like looking at all these stats it's um you know i think we all expected to see a bit of a dip coming out of that time when there were a lot of people that had extra time on their hands or maybe weren't as productive because they weren't at the office um uh, you know or or having to commute you know there was uh, a lot of uh a lot of being at home with nothing to do but ingest different types of content and um, you know entertainment and those kind of things. And uh, to see that it bounced back is uh, great. I think also you know from being in the advertising world, you know we work with a lot of different partners that are um, programmatic ad buying and different kind of uh, buying partners. And the amount of things that we receive now from our uh, our partners is one we use called Division D. Uh, they're a great partner and they are off. They're always pushing new stuff to 
uh, clients like us in order to make sure that we're on the leading edge of things. And lately, um, I'm getting hit with so many things about uh, podcasting opportunities and uh, YouTube podcasting and all these different pieces that are still kind of on the horizon. There's still like a lot of a lot of work that can be done in these places, uh, but it's you know they're giving us so many things to sell to our advertising clients that I. Uh, I'm excited for what the future of this looks like and seeing that the data for medicine is, uh, you know, this is something that I, I can use this report to go and sell to our clients to say, this is why we should perhaps do this this year instead of, um, you know, some other tactics that we may have been running. In the yeah. Past. Yeah, I agree. And there was a piece at uh, podcast movement from M- Megan Lazovich from, uh, tri- from uh, Edison, um, which I'm actually reporting on in tomorrow's uh, newsletter, which is um, essentially a, an extension of that and looking at the type of people who listen to podcasts, looking at, um, uh, you know, additional additional numbers. And basically it's a whole set of, of uh, slides that you can copy and paste into into your client, um, you know, uh, 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 slide shows. So that that's going to be a really helpful tool in being able to convince advertisers, you know, and clients in the US that podcasting is a good thing and that podcasting continues to actually grow. So, yeah, so it's really good, you know, seeing that Edison have, uh, have been doing a little bit more of that. So you'll find that um, linked from tomorrow's n- newsletter. Or if you dive to the Edison research site, you'll find it, it it's already there, of course. Yeah, one of the big hurdles when you're selling this stuff to people is that a lot of the times the decision makers are in that 55 plus range and uh, they don't consume this and, and it's evidenced by the, the data that they don't consume this type of content as much. And it's kind of comes that um, some are very analytics focused and understand that, but some are like, well, I don't listen to podcasts. So I don't think that that's a really big deal, but going ahead and showing them, you know, 55% of people aged 12 to 54 are, or uh, 12 to uh, 34 are listening to podcasts in a week. Um, that's huge. And, and uh, this stuff is, is gold to me. Um, not from a selling perspective, but from a strategic perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's just proof that you have to sell the right thing on the right medium, right? Like you just, you have to sell to the people that are actually on the platform. Podcasting Power Hour is part of Indie Drop-In Network. If you are a podcaster looking to grow your listeners, check out IndieDropIn.com. Indie Drop-In is always free, and we have opportunities right now for comedy, true crime, scary, and paranormal podcasts. Just go to IndieDropIn.com to learn more. Fuzz, what did you think of the social media part of this report? I mean, it seemed, as far as brand awareness, that Facebook was still just dominating. It's dominating but sliding. I see uh, TikTok is growing and there's so much more room to grow uh instagram is growing tiktok is sliding and if you look at the younger generations that you see that that gap becomes even even steeper between uh usage from you know decade to decade so i facebook is you know facebook's making some moves i've I've heard they're trying to come out with a twitter killer um we'll see uh and we could all sync together in the our meta or uh, uh, Elon Musk ships. Um, that'll be fun. But it's uh, it's interesting to see the familiarity rise in some of the smaller players like Mastodon and um, yeah, I forget which other ones was there. I've got to um, scroll back up to see that. But the you know the awareness is growing. The usage is just really not growing a ton. Um, but yeah, I I, see, I mean thirty five to fifty four Facebook dropped. Uh, six percent over last year and that's that's huge when you're talking billions of people that's those are huge numbers so um from your most used platform um so we'll see where where this goes but i think the uh, yeah ages uh 12 to 34 slipped from uh 34 percent using facebook the most to only 20 percent using facebook the most and instagram grew and and twitter uh tiktok grew pretty substantially so um still a big gap though like if you look at just total u.s population 12 plus for brand usage i mean it's got a 20 almost a like a 15 or 18 point lead 
even yeah, though it's, it's down still, a little, but it's yeah, still, it's, it's still big. I mean, yeah, 12 plus it's 46. To, yeah. I, um, uh, but the when you look at that that demo breakout, that seventy four percent in ages fifty five plus, and then it drops by twenty percent to the next age bracket, and then drops by twenty five percent or thirty five percent, excuse me, after that, like that's you know looking at the that is a big problem for Facebook because that age fifty five uh, fifty five to dead as we call it in the uh, whenever there's the plus, like that number is not going to grow, um, like in terms of how many people enter that. Like you're you're not going to go from uh, being age 54 to all of a sudden uh, deciding that you're going to start using Facebook uh, because you turned 55. Uh, so that number is just going to continue shrinking unless they do something to make it interesting and make it something that is uh, yeah. usable again. Yeah, and I think and I think also um, I I would kind of question the amount of um the amount of notice that we are giving to human beings who have listened to one podcast in a month um that that that's not actually particularly helpful to anyone and i think more useful would be and the infinite dial doesn't give this data but more useful would be how long people are spending with podcasts and that's what we should be growing from here on in um not not the, the reach but the um but the time spent um, and I think that that would be a really helpful thing to understand, you know, where we're going. I mean, at the end of the day, from the data that I showed from PodTrack in my in my keynote, um, you know, Spotify has a, an incredible amount of people using Spotify for podcasts. Um, a third of everyone listening in the U.S. is listening to podcasting on uh, Spotify, um, but they are hardly listening to any podcasts. So, you know, if you if you compare, yeah, only a quarter are listening to podcasts on on the Apple platform. But uh, but if you're an Apple listener, you are listening to nine times as many podcasts as you are on uh, Spotify. Now, granted, some of those are automatic downloads, um, so you need to take that that bit out of there. But even so, it, it, it's very clear that there's a big difference there between the casual podcast listener maybe it's somebody that, that's just you know hit a wrong button in the spotify app or they're trying to listen to their morning drive um playlist and and uh, occasionally hear a podcast in there that that's um you know that that's a different conversation to people who are actively willingly going to open a podcast app and listen to individual shows and i think that that's a stat that we should be focusing on a little bit more i know that there's been other conversations around listen time versus uh, downloads, um, which, which um, doing a daily podcast, which is only two and a half minutes long, I, I'm slightly nervous about. But nevertheless, I can certainly see that th there, is, there is benefit now in beginning to look at time spent listening as, as the metric that we should be striving to increase rather than just users. Because as, as Fuzz rightly says, you know, there, there is a certain amount of inertia in terms of some of the older uh, folk out there who, you know, aren't, aren't instantly going to start listening to podcasts, um, uh, you know, just because they want to, you know, ju ju just because that they've 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 heard it's a good thing. They've managed to get through most of their life without, and there's no necessary reason why they should do. So, you know, I think that's just a concern that I might I might have over just looking at the raw reach numbers. I think that you know, I think part of that though has got to be. The fact that what Spotify is trying to do is convert music listeners into podcast listeners. I mean, if you were to roll Apple Music into Apple Podcasts one day, it would probably be the exact opposite. You know, it'd be one tiny percentage of, of total app users listening to music. But I think you're right. I think that, you know, the casual user is probably on an app that does more than one thing. And the dedicated users are, are going to be on, on dedicated podcasting, you know, listening apps. But, uh, you know, we'll see what Spotify does with their audience. Maybe they can, maybe, maybe they're going to ratchet up those minutes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they are. And I think, you know, I mean, I was talking to somebody, I don't use Spotify that much. Um, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a subscriber or, or anything, but I was talking to somebody. That <laughs> no does way. Use Spotify. You're kidding me. You're not. Hey, hey but... stop it. Um, but somebody that uses, uh, I was talking to somebody that uses uh, Spotify and they were saying that, you know, just listening to some of their music, um, you know, their music algorithms, all of a sudden they'll give you a podcast. And that, that will count, of course, in the PodTrack data. 
Um, sure. But yeah. but you know, if you listen, if you listen to fifteen seconds of that and then swipe it away because it's a bloody annoyance, then it'll count as a download um, in the pod track information. And um, and so that's I think why the average is so low. Um, and so. You know, I, I, I mean, I think the fascinating thing is going to be what happens with uh, YouTube if YouTube ever, um, you know, get around to launching something that looks that looks exciting, because I think YouTube um, certainly the, the the reaction from the Pod News Report card, which is essentially there to find out what podcast consumers and cre- uh, and, and creators think of these individual platforms. Everybody is so excited about YouTube. Everybody is so excited about what it might offer. Um, you know, the search functionality, uh, the monetization opportunities that we have. You know, everybody's very, very excited about YouTube finally getting into the podcasting world. They haven't necessarily realized it's mainly going to be YouTube music, not proper YouTube. Um, they haven't necessarily realized that, um, you know, it, it's only in the U.S., so they're making exactly the same mistake that they made with Google Play Music um, of launching it in one country and then forgetting about the other 179. Um, so I think that that's going to be fascinating watching, but there's very clearly a lot of excitement in the podcast creator community around YouTube getting into podcasting. And that will clearly have a big effect in terms of the amount of people who listen to a university commerce podcast, even though, of course, they won't be listening to an RSS feed with enclosures in it. Yeah. YouTube is tricky for me because, you know, I don't know if there's enough money in podcasting for YouTube to have a enough of a pie for them to focus on it. I mean, and even if they did, they would have to request ad-free um, feeds because you know the world is you know dynamic ads are everywhere now so youtube doesn't want someone else's dynamic ads they want to put their own dynamic ads so i don't know the lift the lift seems hard i can understand why they're you know why they're i don't know if that's any of the reasons why they're taking their time but i can see the struggle well i think the lift is particularly hard if you only launch it in one country um you know that's not going to you know and, and facebook did that uh, you know, as well, and that was a, a disaster. And Twitter well, did that Google, as well, and that Google was a disaster. Plus, yeah, Google yeah. Plus was a, it flopped simply because of their rollout was horrendous. And I, I don't think I would ever uh, uh, tell you know assume that Google is going to do a good job at rolling out a new yeah. product or feature. I was <laughs> yeah. about to say worldwide. Google rollout bad. You're kidding me. Yeah, no, exactly. So I, th- I you know, so, but but as I say. You know, they were scoring in some of the uh, in in some of the categories. They uh, YouTube was scoring higher than some of the uh, you know the existing uh, platforms, um, just purely because podcast creators are familiar with how YouTube works. They can they can take a guess at how YouTube might work for podcasting, um, and that you know, and that and that's exciting for them. So even if you know, I think I think many of us are looking at it and going, "Yeah, really? Are you sure this is going to be a thing?" So, um, yeah, but that that was that was an interesting takeaway. Uh, I think an, also an interesting takeaway was just how Apple has increased and improved over the last um, over the last uh, uh, year or so in the, in the, in the scoring, um, and particularly around support and around creator relations around understanding, you know, um, uh, how good the Apple platform is for certain shows. Um, you know, there's a, the, there was a real increase in there. And, um, you know, and I know that we've got some Apple folk, you know, in the, in the audience, but they, they should be patting themselves on the back, you know, for, for a job well done, um, because yeah. that, that, that was a tremendous change in the, you know, in the, in the scoring from last year to this year. Their search has really improved. I, I know I used to have some default shows I would search for to show how it didn't work, and it works now. So I need to go find a weird, obscure show now that that won't show up in search. But that's for me. That's the one that they've uh, that I saw at least where they improved. Yeah. Now for that example, I have to use Podcast Index. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, joking, joking. Like whatever, like a fart in church. You know what else I thought was interesting from this, though? The audio-based social media service awareness. It's like it's a huge increase. Like Twitter spaces, for example. Like the last year, the awareness of that has had a huge increase. 
Now, if that helps or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, it's awareness is uh, one thing, and then yeah. usage the, is the next. It surprises so. me because when Clubhouse came out, it seemed like it like everybody was talking about it much well, more usage than now. increase too. But yeah, I don't know how you. Oh try yeah, that oh yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it, and so I mean, uh, familiarity is always going to increase as these things have been on you know the market. I mean, it's been increasing since 2006 steadily, and it, it was, it's never going to drop. Uh, listenership, you know, that that can be affected by other things, you know, like uh, if YouTube became the big place and it wasn't considered podcasting, you know, that could take a hit uh, in that way. And, and all those, you know, it, it, there's a lot of semantics involved in that, but familiarity will always increase getting that pod, that listening, that actual um, acceptance and usage is the, the trick. And I think as more of the, um, you know, going back to the beginning of this conversation, the more of the I hearts of the world that are um, on their broadcast networks talking about their podcasts that, uh, you know, is essentially going to teach people uh, whether uh, they are familiar or not about that, and then getting them to start converting. And, and again, as we have those younger generations that use technology, uh, this technology more um, become, you know, the adults of the world, then that number will just that in, that usage number will continue to increase as well. So. I also thought it was, I mean, I thought the audio books stats were amazing. Like they've been doing this for what, eight years, this, this data. And just to see it have the most significant increase it's had in this time span. Yeah. 25% over the last in, year. Yeah. 25% yeah. increase over last year, 20, uh, 17% over the highest year that they've uh, been measuring. And uh, yeah, that's huge. And I guess that goes to say too, um, you know, considering those uh, options as a, as a, an audio creator, um, you know, maybe that, uh, maybe that's a some blue sky for you. So, some blue what do you water. think that increased so much? I, I just honestly don't know. It's all audible ads. Yeah, content, man. Content, the content yeah. is growing. Yeah. Was the, as soon as the backlog, you know, gets gets filled, you know, people are going to find more of what they're looking for. Well, and I think the other thing is when you write a book, you have to kind of figure out what you're going to say before you run up to your, you know, typewriter. <laughs> um, where how many podcasts do you just you know the first nine minutes are French toast recipes and cat stories? Um, now, granted, I always skip the introduction of a book because they're just going to tell me what I'm going to hear in the book. Where I'm like, how about if I just hear the book? That would be great. But um, I know uh, the other nice thing about Audible, I just got a book that I don't like, and you can send it back. Where most of the time, if I'm listening to an audio book, I'm getting something out of it. I can't always say that for a podcast. The, the, I see. I think. I think though. There's two different. I, I, I disagree with you in, a, in some part because, well, for both of them, unlike radio, you can skip ahead and get to the part that you want. But with podcasting, I feel like part of it is you're tuning in for the personalities. Of an audiobook, sometimes you don't know who you're going to get unless you're like specifically, you know, listening for like Timothy Zahn or somebody like that. Uh, you don't know, like. That part is is different. I think with with podcasts, it's it's personality and con and like subject matter and that and that uh, you know you might not ever you know, everybody's got I'm not going to yuck your yum, but everybody's got their different tastes. Well, I like the banter on stuff sometimes more than the content because I I list, sometimes listen for the personalities themselves. So. Well, as you say that, it dawns on me that in the early days of Mark Marin, I hated his little intro thing. And I just wanted to get to the guest. And lately, I don't recognize half of his guests, but I've been listening so long that I now tune in for the weird cat story. And when he starts interviewing some director of a movie I've never heard, I tune out. So you, you've definitely got a point there. We do tune in for the the personalities. Yeah, a lot more radio-like than audiobooks, which are a lot more book-like, but with flavor. I wonder if anybody's ever designed an audio book based on their podcast content, which, which is like more structured, chapter based, you know, taking the episodes, removing any of the personality, so to speak, you know, I, or anything. I know, I know Harry Duran and Gary Leland both took their interviews and, and for the record, so did Howard Stern, uh, took their, their top interviews and, you know, edited them and turned them into a book. I don't know if they've ever been turned into an, well, they don't. It'll need to be an audio book because it's already a podcast. So I have seen people go the other way where they've, via some editing, uh, turned their content into a book. Yeah, I don't know that I understand the economics of the audio book, uh, audio book world, but it'd be interesting to know, like, what, a, you know, what does the author, 
you know, or who gets what money based on how many thousands of, of, oh, of listens. I'm certain I, it's better than podcasting. I, well, my fun story is when I wrote my book, I was approached by a publisher and I said, well, here's the thing. I want a hundred percent of the audio rights. And they went, yeah, we can't do that. And then we played the used car game where they keep going back to somebody to see if they could do it. And to make a long story short, I own a hundred percent of the audio rights of my audio book. Cause I said, look, I don't need you guys. I've already got a platform. Um, and when I finally went to, I still haven't recorded the audio book. Uh, although after seeing a demo of Hindenburg, they have a really cool tool for recording an audio book. Uh, you know, Amazon takes a huge chunk of anything on Audible. So I might release it kind of on a, there's an app I bought on AppSumo years ago for, you can upload your own audio book. I might do that for the super fans and keep some of the money that I actually make. And then once those people have got it, uh, go to Audible and, you know, take the crumb that Amazon leaves me. If you go Audible exclusive, the author receives 40% of the royalties. Um, and uh, in, in a, I, you would split that with the narrator if you're not the narrator. If you are publishing on other platforms, the author only receives 25% of the royalties. So you sell a $10, $10, $10 book, you're getting 250 on Audible. Uh, if you also sell on other platforms or you're getting $4 if you sell exclusively on Audible. So. Yeah, so just do the math on <laughs> versus podcasting. It is not pretty. Like if you sell three twenty-five dollar ads on a thousand, you know, for a thousand listeners, it's not the per listener payment is not great. But you're, so you're did, equating, yeah, you're equating that to one episode though versus a, you know, a sixteen-hour audiobook. So there's a lot of other math I think involved. Oh, in, for sure, for sure. Episode. Yeah, I, I did a, I did some math on true crime, my true crime show, and you know, it's hard to tell, but you know, some apps track it, and the average listener listens to 35 episodes. So, you know, you figure it, it gets up there, but I don't know. I still don't know if the math, if the math maths. We're, ne- we're nearly out of time. And I was just wondering whether anybody else had seen the news about Rob Greenlee today. No. Yeah. 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 He has, uh, <laughs> let me read his statement. Uh, I just had it. The change you may have seen today with me is driven by my desire to focus on being a content creator again and helping other media creators get started. In other words, he's left Podbean. Uh, Promote, grow, and potentially monetize their shows regardless of the platform they host on. For me to be a trusted partner, I need to be seen as an unbiased, as unbiased in my view on distribution and monetization tools. Over my last three roles, that would be Podbean, Lipson, and Spreaker, uh, I have been, it's hard, you need a scorecard. Um, I've been put in a position of directing people to a particular hosting platform that may or may not have been the correct decision. I prefer to be a trusted and unbiased consultant of sorts towards the best solution for content creators of all available options. I'm looking forward, uh, I'm looking for shows and creators I can help make the best choices for them. Uh, feel free to DM him about any opportunities. Um, I am passionate about the new media slash podcasting community. Well, we know he is. Uh, and he is now announcing that he's a co-founder and partner of PodcastEZ.com. So, there yeah, so there's PodcastEZ.com and also Spoken Life Media, which is, um, yeah. I think Spoken Life, Spoken Life Media is his company. And he's also an advisor for PodcastEZ.com, except if you're in Canada, where it's uh, EZ.com. Um, right. podcastez.com that makes no sense at all uh, but yeah so quite a, quite a change and I think I, I, I thought I thought the middle of that statement was really interesting where he says I've been put in a position of directing people to a particular hosting platform that may or may not have been the correct decision it must be really difficult if you are um, and, and you know, Dave, you're in the same you're you're in the same boat, I guess. Of um, sometimes having to drive people towards a particular platform that that actually you kind of know may be not the right platform for for that particular particular person. So it's um hard job for Rob certainly, and I can and I can well um, see that that's um, a new and exciting uh, move for him. Yeah, I've always approached that with. And I'm, it's one of those things where if I ever had somebody choose a company that wasn't mine, I just go, here is company A. They have this kind of thing and this feature and this feature and that feature. And then here's company B and they do this and here's our company. And then I let the 
the person choose. And if they don't choose the company I work for and somebody at my company were to argue, I'd be like, well, which one would you choose? You know what I mean? It's like, our, I, yeah. to me in the end, I don't plan on leaving the company I'm with right now. I'm very happy in my job. But uh, in the end, I wouldn't want my client to come to me and go, hey, I, I just found out company B is like. Yeah, I just I, found out I, Anchor existed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I'm not going to recommend. But nonetheless, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it is tricky. And it is uh, sometimes shocking when people go, wait, so I should go over here. And I'm like. And you're in, you know, I'm moving 17 shows depending on the scenario, you know, so it's always, yeah. it is tricky. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. indeed. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it's a good, good for Rob. Uh, I was chatting to him on the Friday night and, uh, and he didn't spill the beans at all. So clearly, <laughs> clearly he's been, um, you know, he's been uh, uh, w- working on this as a secret squirrel for the last couple of weeks. How dare he not break the news to you? I can't believe it. <laughs> that <laughs> that or there that. was a really... That or there was a really big blow up in podcast movement that we made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I've seen some things. A pattern emerges. <laughs> yep. Well, and I was pretty sure if he could hit Buzzsprout and Blueberry, you know, he there's got to be some sort of award for that. He's he's been every place else, but uh, you know, congrats. Uh, I, I wish him the best. He's a really good guy. He is. Yeah, yeah. No, he's really good. That's right, Dave. Uh, so yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anything else that stood out to you from the, the podcast move or any of the data anybody speaking uh the wi-fi at the Westgate is uh in the top five of worst ever that, that did, made the did you try to fun. record there so, uh i was trying like the first day i got there you set up the booth and you have the rest of the day so i was trying to do i don't know my job and in some cases like if you got on the 24th floor you just weren't connecting to anything and everybody i talked to had used their their phone for a hotspot. And then the weird problem I ran into, I would turn on my hotspot and everybody in the building had turned on their hotspot. So your your list of Wi-Fi connections or Bluetooth or whatever, yeah, Wi-Fi, it was just nuts. And I'm like, I know, I know my phone's in here somewhere. So it it just made for a yeah. uh, an unpleasant experience. It, it it's it certainly I mean I, I did a little piece piece of research because on my own personal uh, blog I, I boringly write a trip report of of the various airplanes that i <laughs> i took and uh, I, I did a little bit piece of research on the westgate and um yeah i mean it used to be up until 1990 it was the biggest hotel in the world and it had 2900 different rooms in it and you you you're just there thinking and there are three by the way there are three very large rooms right at the top um which all have their own private swimming pool and all kinds of all kinds of exciting things so i'm presuming that obviously you know um you know dan was in one of those and jared was in another um but uh, yeah i mean you know there's a lot of history with that with that um with that hotel but also um yeah there were certainly bits of it that could have worked a little bit better these days uh i was lucky with the wi-fi the wi-fi seemed to work for me on the 19th floor so that was okay which is a good job because you know if you're doing a if you're trying to write a newsletter and publish it that's kind of important but um yeah but wi-fi is always a bad experience at these at these things so hoping that um la fixes the whole thing again and i i don't blame podcast movement for that but it was just one of those where you're it is always kind of you know not to make a bad Vegas pun, but you roll the dice and you, you kind of hope for the best. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Yeah, I know indeed. I mean, I have to say, uh, the, you know, the thing that I'm sort of slightly worried about is at least you could get out of the place and you could go, you know, go go to somewhere else down 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 the strip. Um, whereas, of course, the the podcast the podcast movements proper are all going to be in these these resort hotels you know, miles away from anywhere else. Um, and so we will all be stuck there. And if the Wi-Fi doesn't work, well, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. If you have no coverage on your phone, well, tough. Um, so that that's always a concern. And I, I would much rather be, um, you know, back in the same kind of experience that we had at Dallas or F- Philadelphia or any of these, you know, city center um, venues rather than uh, resort venues in the middle of nowhere. But I do understand, you know, um, the, 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 the economics of that probably makes it, makes it work, you know, f- from that point of view. But, um, you know, I, I certainly found the, the, fifth, the Philadelphia podcast movement 
that I went to was, you know, super good from from the point of view of just being able just to get out of the hotel and go and do other things. Well, Fuzz, maybe next year uh, Washington County, Wisconsin <laughs> will host. Yeah. You're the mayor. You can make that. Happen. We've got we have great Wi-Fi here uh, and, uh, and 5G coverage. It's wonderful. Uh, but yeah, I would, the, I would the courtyard say, Marriott is hopping. Yeah, we us. have uh, we have enough hotel rooms for everybody on the space here today. So uh, come on down. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All in the Motel Six, yeah. and you'll, yeah, and you'll yeah, leave the light yeah, on for us, yeah, right? Yeah. We, we, actually have, we actually have a motel called the Bonnie, which is uh, smaller than the Motel Six. So we'll and also uh, we'll keep some of the lights on. They're LEDs, so it'll be okay. But. We'll we'll keep some of the lights on for you. That should be that should be the phrase. Yeah. Oh, you we'll mean the, you mean you we'll turn on every thir- you turn on every third street light on purpose? I thought that yeah, was, yeah. they were just yeah. burnt out. Well, no, we turn off every two uh, street lights on purpose. Uh, that's you know for cost saving, conservative town. Um, has anybody talked to the powers that be at podcast movements? about the wi-fi and just said hey like is there a is there a how was your experience yeah they're, form? they're aware that they're aware that the wi-fi was wasn't great for some people um i mean as i say i found on the show floor i found that it was fine uh, and in my room it was fine but dave um and many others said that there were issues a little bit further up that's what happens if you get the expensive rooms further up i think that's that's what it's, it is dave <laughs> well the other fun thing was so then we all came down early to work in our booth because there was Wi-Fi down here. And they kicked um, – I didn't get there that early, but one of our workers got there at, like, 6.30, and it didn't open till like, 8.30. And they kicked her out of her own booth. They're like, yeah, we're oh, not yeah. open yet. Vegas so, Vegas is notorious for that. We've done enough shows yeah. there. They're, they're, uh, trade shows in general, they, uh, depending on if certain groups are uh, responsible for them, they will – they they don't let you just wander yeah. or, or or give you those options. Trade shows well, suck. I'm, That's where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, when I worked at the uh, Newbity Expo, um, there was a session coming up, and it was four people, and there were only three chairs. So I called the the head honcho. I'm like, hey, we need a chair over here, and he's like, are you sure? And I go, do you want him to stand? Like, what's the deal? And so he's like, all right. So this you know union guy brings over a chair, and later the the head honcho came over and. I was like, how was your session? I was like, it went great. He's like, okay, I hope you like the chair. That cost us three hundred dollars to have somebody move it. And I was like, holy crazy! That was just crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going back to Vegas n- next month, and I used to uh, look after a booth there for a company that I was working for, and uh, um, you, you know, even even ordering a waste bin, uh, or what do you call it? Call them a trash can, garbage bin. You, yeah. Even. Even ordering one of those, that was two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and so we just, you know, we just found a, um, you know, found a, 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 you know, a plastic bag and stuffed uh, stuff in there. But for the NAB show, what they also do is they um, is they fine you if you start packing up your stand prior to the event finishing. They actually come around and they fine you thousands of dollars. Um, for packing up early, and I noticed that the Tascam guy at Podcast Movement couldn't be bothered to stay f- for the last day, and it literally just packed up and, and gone. Um, and uh, yeah, if you'd have tried that at the NAB show, you would you would have been fined. You know that that that's how that works. Yeah, we uh, we once had one of our employees in Chicago at a trade show plug in some electrical cords, simply just put a plug into the outlet, and one of the uh, the show floor workers came, unplugged the cords, and then cut the cords in half. And then we had to go and buy new cords from them, and then pay an employee to come and plug the cords in for us. So that's the uh, that's the trade show world. Everything's really wow. expensive. Yeah, wow, it's, that's impressive. Yeah, so that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, I've already heard a rumor going around that Tucker Carlson will be at pod, the next podcast movement. So we'll see how that goes. Greg, you take us home. <laughs> No. <laughs> yes, I will. After that, thanks for the setup. Uh, so thanks everybody for coming to this podcasting power hour. I, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Going through those stats is really helpful for me because I look at these and and some of them don't offer me a tremendous amount of insight, but then I hear other people talk about it and you know I, I feel like it gains much more importance and I can do things 
and think about things much differently. So thanks for everybody for participating in the conversation. Um, you can check shows out in Jeff's timeline if you want to listen to this uh, or other shows within the last month, I think, is when Twitter cuts them off. It might be longer, but month is a good, a good number. And uh, after that, you can go to podcastingpowerhour.com, which we have all the information there. And he will have those up about six months after we're done. Yeah. See, I, I never committed to six months. They will be up there sometime after we're done. <laughs> no, that's Fuzz. always. Yeah, yep, Fuzz. Yep. Fuzz, you want to have a closing comments? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for coming on Podcast Power Hour. Uh, I flipped Tanner's old podcast about myself and RE20. Uh, and uh, now we're, uh, yeah, now I'm just doing podcasts about my local community and I'm loving it. So, uh, but I do love uh, coming on here and talking these numbers and, and still appreciate being part of the community and thank you for coming on. We'll talk to you next Monday at nine Eastern. I love the RE20. Are you loving it or what? Uh, honestly, it, it arrives tomorrow. So I, I, I used an RE20 my whole radio career. Yeah. The fact that I get one back and actually am able going to be able to, uh, EQ it the way that I want to and not the way my station engineer wanted mm-hmm. to uh, and, and and actually EQ it for podcasting and not for FM broadcast uh, will be will be great. So I'm looking forward to it. I'll you're going you from the, it yeah, you're going from the pod mic to the RE? Yeah, yeah, I had a pod mic. Yeah, I did the same I, thing. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks for coming. Cool. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for listening to the Podcasting Power Hour. Everyone is free to participate on Twitter Spaces every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. To join, just follow Jeff at podcast underscore father or Greg at Indie Dropin. If you found this podcast helpful, go into your podcast app and write a quick review. Other podcasters will see it and know this show is worth listening to. Also, I'll put a few links in the show notes for ways you can support the show. I think by now you know we love our coffee. Have a great week.